we've managed to keep busy the last couple of weeks with some camping and canoeing and some things that just seemed like too much effort to film or I didn't think would make for compelling video. So it's been a while since there's been any new content, but that's changing today. We're going on an old fashioned road trip. Well, believe it or not, we've been on the road for about three hours, and this is our first real stop. We are here at the historic Travers Cemetery. Now here's something I don't think I've ever recalled seeing before. A cemetery with a turnstile. A scene right out of the Old West, simple wooden crosses marking the graves. Even when the school is long gone, I always enjoy stopping at all these old historic school sites. And this one here is Casimir School, 1909 to 1936. No trace of the school here anymore, of course. This is a neat touch. All along the outside of that main rock and surrounding it are smaller rocks that have names of teachers and people involved with the school on them. It's unfortunate some of them are pretty faded and hard to read now. There we go. Casimir School Site. Not the quietest place we've been on this trip because we're right beside a fairly major road. I mean, major at least for this area. But nonetheless, always cool to visit these old places. Our next stop on this trip is going to involve a little bit of off-road travel as we finally get away from that highway. We are heading to the Sundial Medicine Wheel. Now the Sundial Medicine Wheel is located kind of in the middle of nowhere as you can tell and the interesting part of it is no one really knows how old this one is. There hasn't been any excavations or anything done to try and date it. Okay, heading up here. And there's the central cairn of the medicine wheel, kind of overgrown a bit. And if we look over here, you can see there's these two lines of rocks that kind of outline an outer circle around the central cairn. So uh, Sundial Hill is not very tall, relatively speaking, but compared to everything else in this area, it um, offers some amazing viewpoints. I mean, I don't know if you can hear me over the wind, but if you look around behind me, there is nothing but prairie for as far as the eye can see. Of course, the best way to get an overall sense of what this medicine wheel looks like will be from the air. So once we get down off the hill here, I'm going to put the drone up and we'll take a look at what we can see.
now that I'm down on the leeward side of the hill, it's uh, probably a little bit better in terms of audio quality. So this would be a great time for me to selfishly remind you, you should check out our video from the Majorville Medicine Wheel, which we recorded probably a couple years ago. I'll put a link to it uh, probably in the description if I think of it, or if not, in the little linky thing on the screen. Welcome to Beauville Cemetery, donated in 1905 by Annan Hovde, or Hoved. Either way, this one looks neat. It looks like there's a little miniature chapel in the background there. We'll have to check this out. See what it says on the door. Built and donated to Mobile Cemetery, 1987. And you know our rules, always try the door. And in this case, it has opened. Oh, this is very reminiscent of the little chapels in Drumheller and the Crow's Nest Pass. A few flies in here right now. The good news is I think it's hot enough in here to kill any virus that might be hanging around. Beauville Cemetery. We've seen a school stop sign for Beauville School, Beauville Cemetery here. Uh, don't know anything about the history of Beauville. Uh, it's not even really been on my radar before, so this is kind of a neat little find. I've never been to this cemetery before. Off to the next place, wherever that may take us. We're not sure. We're just kind of playing it by ear today. Welcome to a classic Alberta ghost town. This is Retlaw, Alberta, and probably our final major stop on today's amazing road trip. Probably the highlight of Retlaw is the old United Church. 
once standing pretty much in ruins and abandoned, now fully restored and once again functional for special occasions. One of the things Retlaw has done a fantastic job with is putting up all these signs that show you where some of the old buildings were and give you a quick overview of some of the history of them as well. This was the Newton and Cook Grocery and Dry Goods Store. Nothing here now except an empty lot, but you can imagine what once was. It's like, do they actually open? Try that one. Oh! If I can get the camera in. Not this way, but you can kind of see inside. Full little model school. American. E. O. American. Passed away in forty six. I mean, isn't this a nice touch? The locals even take time to plant fresh flowers along the buildings and still mow the grass and everything. This was likely an old barn at one point, by the looks of it. And the <laughs> old bed frame with flowers in it. Yeah, it could have been a chicken coop. But I mean, really, what is a chicken coop other than a barn for chickens? This sign here is really faded, but it says it was the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. So this piece of concrete, if I had to venture a guess, is probably some part of the old bank vault. And this here was the site of the This is another one relating to the hotel, and again, it's really faded and hard to read, but down at the bottom, it talks about being dismantled and moved out in the late 1920s. Now, I swear I was doing a search on the Calgary Herald archives for things related to rent law, and I saw a mention of the hotel being demolished in 1928, but it didn't say anything about it being moved or where it was being moved to. This sign here was for the National Cafe, and you can see at one point there was a photo attached, but it's now also faded. But at least the lettering on this sign uh, facing to the east seems to be in better condition than the ones on the other side of the main street. The Campbell and White Meat Market. This would have been a prime location to set up a business. As you can see, you would have been right along Railway Avenue and Main Street. So that would have been one of the busiest corners in the entire town. Although when you look back now, it's hard to tell today, but this was a hustling business district back in the time. This sign here, located in front of the old rail bed that you can see running there, talks about the establishment of the town in 1913. What's long gone from the Retlaw skyline are the grain elevators. Now I know there at one point was at least two elevators here, but like most of these towns, there was probably a lot more at one point. Uh, I do remember seeing a photo of the grain elevator, I believe it was, in Alberta Wheat Pool going up in flames around 1980. Now this sign is completely faded and is unreadable, but I believe from previous visits here, I remember this being a service station. I don't actually remember it being a service station. I remember the sign talking about it being a service station. And you can see here, there's a pretty good 
footprint where the foundation still uh, still remains. Still some old car parts here. That looks like an old exhaust pipe and that looks like an old car part. You can still see there's the one house back there that is occupied, which is probably good. That really helps uh, maintain this place and keeps it out of the hands of vandals and thieves, uh, knowing that there is somebody who actually still lives here on the town site versus it being a 100% ghost town. In the Retlaw Cemetery, with all the names of those who served in this case, World War I and World War II. And something else that is kind of interesting what they've done is they have these billboards set up over here with a bunch of biographical information about a lot of the people from the area who served. And uh, they also have some other exhibits like discharge certificates and things. So. Again, they've done a really nice job in preserving the history of the area here. Over there is marked as the old livery stable, and then there's another occupied property there. Here's the site of Hao Yi's Alberta Cafe, probably most notable for being the last business in town outside of the Alberta Wheat Pool and the elevator that I mentioned that burnt down around 1980. Alberta Cafe was operating right up until 1964. So inside the church here at Retlaw, uh, very nice to get out of the wind and get a chance to record some really good audio and also a really good chance to get out of the sun. I didn't bring sunscreen or a hat today, so I know I'm going to pay for this tomorrow with sunstroke of some sort. But a uh, little anecdote about this church and its importance to me. In early the early 90s, let's say it was between 1990 and 1992, I was driving on the back road between Tabor and Vauxhall, which is just a mile or so off to the east here of Retlaw, and I saw the church off on the distance and decided to venture over here. And at that time, you know, 30 years ago, this church was in a really sad state of uh, disrepair and I wasn't really sure how long it would be around. So it was really interesting to see, and that's when I first discovered the town of Retlaw as a ghost town. And that really kicked off, I think, a true passion for ghost towning and abandoned places. So it is really interesting to be able to come back to this church, which I have never been inside it before, but I have been back to Retlaw since. But to be able to come back to this church all these years later, you know, 30 years later, and see how it's been restored and the condition it's in and how remarkable it is, and that the town of Go, uh, sorry, and how the town of Retlaw is still here as a ghost town, that is amazing to me. And to see how the internet has really allowed people with a passion for abandoned and historic places to share that with the community and with other like-minded individuals and how that community has grown over those three decades is remarkable. It's something I never would have expected to see in my lifetime and I hope it's something that continues to grow that uh, you know, encourages more people to come visit these places and more importantly treat them with respect and preserve them for future generations to discover.